Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Reading for Vocabulary. We're still continuing the theme of heroes, and in lesson 14, our title is A Dream Come True. In this lesson, we will focus on Martin Luther King Jr. Do you know him? He was a hero who fought for people's rights. So in this lesson, we're going to learn about Martin Luther King Jr., an important hero in American history. Uh, first of all, who is Martin Luther King Jr.? He is this man here. And in this picture, he is giving a speech in Washington, D.C., and there are thousands and thousands of people who have come to hear him speak. He is very famous for his speech I have a dream. Perhaps you've heard of that speech before. It's the speech in which he calls for equality between black people and white people. And in fact, for people of all races and all colors to be equal and to be treated equal under the law. So he's a very important person in American history, and that is Martin Luther King. Okay, we're going to read a passage about him, but we need to learn some words first. So let's begin with word number one, a wish. Now, this poor kid is in school, right? And he doesn't want to be in school. He doesn't want to study. He's thinking about playing soccer, right? So he has a wish. He has a dream to go outside and play soccer. Do you have a dream? We all have dreams. We all wish we could do something. We all dream that we could do something else, perhaps. But some dreams are better than other dreams, right? Dreaming to go out to play soccer, yeah, that's a common dream. But dreaming for a better world, that's a much better dream. That's a much better wish. And we use wish, we use dream, when it seems very difficult to get what we want, right? When you say, I dream of doing something, that means it's going to be hard. It's going to be very difficult. It might be impossible to get it, but you dream about it. It's a wish. It's different from saying hope. Hope is something a little easier to get. For example, I hope it rains tomorrow. Probably it will rain tomorrow. Probably. So I hope it rains tomorrow. But if there's no chance of rain, it's going to be sunny every day. They say, oh, I wish it would rain tomorrow. Okay? So wish or dream is for something that seems impossible. Hope is for something that seems a little more possible. Okay? Next one. <clears throat> to think of something from the past. When you think of something from the past, what are you doing? You are, of course, remembering. Remember. Remember. Can you remember what you did last year? Can you remember what you did last week? Can you remember what you did this morning? I hope so. <laughs> okay. What did you have for breakfast this morning? Can you remember? If you think about something in the past, you're remembering. Okay, number three. <clears throat> To come together with. To come together with. If all of these people come together, what are they doing? They are joining. To join. Join together. To join. You can just say join. You don't have to say join together. You just need to say to join. Okay, number four. Number four is not scared. Have you ever done this? What is this person doing? This person is bun G jumping. Bungee jumping. Bungee jumping. Right? Did you ever do that? I did a long time ago. And I was scared. <laughs> but you have to get over your fear. You have to be not scared. Right? If you're not scared, you are brave. You have to be brave to go bungee jumping right? You have to be brave. You have to be not scared. You must be brave. Okay, next one. Five. Not together. Sad story, right? Yoja chingu, namja chingu. They're fighting, right? 
So they're looking at each, they're looking away from each other. They're not together now. They're not together. They are apart, apart, together, apart. So if people are together, they're with each other. They're sitting together. They're also thinking together. But if they're apart, right, they're not close to each other. And maybe they're thinking different ways. So together, apart, pandero. Okay, number six. To make somebody feel unhappy. To make someone feel unhappy is upset. To make someone upset. You can also use it as a verb. I upset him. I upset him. That means I made him angry. I made him unhappy. I upset him. Or to make someone upset. Upset. We say upset, upset, upset. Okay, it doesn't change for past tense. Uh, he upset me. Yesterday he upset me. Have you upset your brother? Right? So it's always upset. We don't change it in the past tense. It's an irregular verb. Number seven, a rule made by a government. So when the government makes a rule and everybody has to follow that rule, what is the rule? It is a law. A law. You should follow the law or obey the law. You must obey the law because if you break the law, if you break the law, then the police catch you and you have to pay money or go to jail. So you should follow the law, obey the laws. Laws are rules made by a government. Rules are just made by everybody. We can make rules. If we play a game, let's make some rules. We don't make laws. Only the government makes laws, okay? So that's the difference between a law and a rule. Rules are, you know, anybody can make a rule, but laws are made by the government. Okay. Eight, the same, the same. So it looks like here we have a big heart and we have many little hearts, but they weigh the same. If something is the same, we can say it's equal, equal. These two things, now they're different, but they weigh the same. Their weight is equal, right? So even though some two things or many things, they might look different, they can be equal in some ways, right? They're different in, in these ways, but they're equal in other ways. That's an important idea. Equal, okay? So they are equal. Uh-oh, what happened, right? We have a car accident. Now, if a car accident takes place or really anything takes place, what do we say? It happens. So bad things happen, right? Unfortunately, some bad things happen. Some good things happen too. Happen, now this picture looks like a negative situation, but happen is not a negative word. It's a neutral word because good things happen and bad things happen. It just means it took place. It happened, right? If you get an A on your test, that happens. If you break a window, that happens. So many different things happen. They occur. They take place to happen. Okay, number 10, one and the other. So we're talking about one here, right? One and the other. So one and the other. They are what? We say both. Both, not just one, not only the other one, but both together, both, both of them. So one and the other are both. Okay, next one. To rest on your bottom, on your bottom. Bottom is a polite word for your ondongi, right? <laughs> okay, don't say hip. Don't say hip because hip is on the side. Hip is not your bottom. You have a hip on this, a right hip and left hip. You have hips are on the side. Hip is on the side. Bottom is on the bottom. You sit down on your bottom. Don't sit on your hip. That's himdro and that's painful. right? You shouldn't sit on your hip. Sit on your bottom. Okay. To rest on your bottom, of course, sit. 
and sit is an irregular verb, so we say sit, sat, sat. Sit, sat, sat. Uh, let's sit down here. Oh, I sat here yesterday. Have you ever sat here? Right? Uh, did you ever? Uh, I, have, I have sat here before, for example. Okay? So sit, sat, sat. Okay. To rest on your bottom. Okay? On dongi. Okay, that's a polite word. Okay. Number 12. The part that faces forward. So the part of a person or a building that faces forward. It's the, what is it? It's the front part of something. So of course, if you look at a house, this is the front part of the house. That's the part that faces forward to the street. When you come to the house, you see the front of the house. When you look at a person, you see the front of the person, not the back, right? Well, unless they turn their back, right? But you look at a person, usually you look at their front, their face. So that's the front, the front of a person, the front of a building, the front of a car. It's the part that faces forward. Okay. Not different. We talked about this a little bit before. It's kind of similar. We have a father and a son. And yes, they are different in some ways, but they are also the same because they're wearing the same cap. They're the same family. This is the father. This is the son. Right? In fact, there's an interesting expression in English. Like father, like father, comma, like son. What this means is that the son will grow up to be like the father. Or the son behaves like the father. So the son and the father behave in the same way. Or they look the same way. So if they're not different, they are the same. Yes, one is an old, uh, older man, not an old man, but he's older. One is a baby. They're different in size, but they're the same. They're the same family, right? There's, in some ways, they're the same. In some ways, they're different. But if you say something is not different, they're the same, or the other word we learned earlier, equal, right? Same or equal. Number 14, planet Earth. The planet Earth, what is it? We say it's the world, right? This is the world, or Earth, or planet Earth. It's the Earth on which we live. It's our world. Okay. 15, true or false? Well, if something is not false, it is, of course, true, right? It's right there for you, right? So if something is not false, not a lie, not an untruth, then it is true, right? It is true. What's true? Of course, if it is true, uh, it is real. It is the actual situation. It's true. Next one is 16, to move to where the speaker is. So if you're going to move from here to where the speaker is, what are you doing? You are coming, okay? So if I'm the speaker and you move to me, I say, you are coming here, right? Or you say, I will come to you, right? I will come to you. I will come to you, right? Or please come here, please come here. So to move to where the speaker is, to, is to come. And it's an irregular verb, come, came, come. Come, came, come, okay? So when we talk about in the past, we use uh, came for a simple past. Uh, I came here yesterday, uh, have you come here before, okay? Have you come here before, okay? Now, let's go over the words, the word exercises, vocabulary exercises. These are our words, dream, upset, join, and laws. We need to write the word next to its meaning. So we need to write these words next to the word that has the same meaning. The words again are dream, dream, upset, upset, join, join, and laws laws. Let's look at the number one. One is rules, okay? So what did we talk about before? <clears throat> there are rules, but a rule that is made by the government is a special kind of rule. It is a law. So rules and laws have similar meanings. They're different. Yeah, they mean different things, <clears throat> but they're similar. Rules made by the government are laws. Okay. Number two, a wish. 
When you wish for something, you have what? You have a dream. You have a dream when you wish for something. Three, unhappy. If somebody is unhappy, right, they are what? They are, of course, upset. And upset can also be used as a verb, not just an adjective. He is upset, that's adjective. But I upset him, that's a verb. So unhappy and upset are similar meanings. Of course, unhappy is only an adjective. Four, come together with. When you come together with something, many people come together, they join. They join together. They get together, they join together. Okay. We also have another type of exercise here. Now, this is opposites, not similar words, but opposite words. Words that have the opposite meaning. What we need to do here is circle, right? It says circle the word, so we need to circle, right? The word or words, it could be one word or it could be two words, in the sentence that are opposite of the word in bold print. This is bold print, this is bold print. So what we need to do is look at the sentence and find the part of the sentence that is the opposite of the word in bold print. Number one, the word in bold print is apart, apart. The sentence is, she always has fun when they are together. <clears throat> now, which word in this sentence is the opposite, pandero, of the word apart? Remember, apart, pandero, together. So this is it right here. We should circle this word. She always has fun when they are together. Pandero, apart. Okay? Number two, the word is upset. Upset. The sentence, John is very happy to see his grandfather. John is very happy to see his grandfather. So which word in this sentence is the opposite of upset? Which word is the opposite? Well, upset is the same meaning as unhappy, right? Un means not, not happy. So happy is the opposite of upset, right? Very simple. Okay, next one, number three, <clears throat> our word is brave, brave. Sentence, Jane was scared of the big dog. <laughs> if you see a big dog, bro, 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 right? You are what? You are scared, right? <clears throat> now, scared, that's the opposite of brave, right? Brave means to be not scared. So, scared and brave are opposites. They mean different things, opposite things. Okay, number four, the word is remember, remember, remember. The sentence is, I forget which street he lives on. I forget which street he lives on. So remember means to think about the past, to know something from the past. But if you can't think about the past or you something in the past you can't think of it that means you forgot it right so forget means the opposite of remember remember and forget are different they are opposites okay so interesting exercise okay those are our two vocabulary exercises for the words let's take a short break we'll come back and look at the reading okay welcome back let's go over the reading together the lesson, of course, is a dream come true. When something happens and it's a dream that came true, your dream happens, you can say it's a dream come true. Now, this passage is about Martin Luther King Jr. And it's about his dream and the fact that his dream has come true these days. Of course, he didn't live to see it. But anyway, let's go over the passage together. All his life, Martin Luther King Jr. had a dream. He had a dream. His dream was that someday all people would be equal. His dream came true, but it wasn't easy. Many changes had to happen first. Okay, so we're talking about Martin Luther King. All his life, for his entire life, since he was a baby boy, since he was a young boy, until he was an adult, all his life he had this dream. 
What was his dream? His dream was that, was that. His hope was that. His statement was that. When you, we use was that, we're saying what something was. His dream. What was his dream? His dream was that someday all people would be equal. All people would be the same. Now, before when we studied equal, right, I said, yes, people are different, right? Nobody's really the same, exactly the same. But under the law, we should treat everybody equal, right? That means that everybody has the same rights, everybody has the same responsibilities, everybody should be treated the same way, even if they look different, or even if they, you know, they're, they're taller, or they're shorter, or they have white skin, they have black skin, they should all be equal. And that was Martin Luther King Jr.'s dream, that everybody would be equal, would be treated equally. His dream came true. His dream did come true in America, but it wasn't easy. It was not easy. It was very difficult at the time. Many changes had to happen first. So when Martin Luther King was alive, when he was a young man, people were not treated equally. He wanted to change that, but he had to make many changes. And not just he, but society had to make many changes. And it's very, very difficult to change society. Martin Luther King Jr. grew up in Atlanta, Georgia in the 1930s. At that time, African Americans and whites were not treated the same. African American children could not go to the same schools as white children. They couldn't even play together. Okay, so this tells us a little bit about Martin Luther King Jr.'s childhood or his life, right? He grew up in the 1930s. That's a long time ago, right? Especially now we're getting on to, you know, 70 years ago or 80 years ago. And in Georgia, in Georgia, in the southern United States. At that time and in that place, African Americans and whites were not treated the same. Remember, treat somebody the way, uh, in, in a way. Remember in the last lesson when we were talking about Rob Roberto Clemente, we, we saw this expression, not treated the same. They, people did not behave towards that person the same way. They treated white people differently than they treated black people. They were treated in different ways, not the same. For example, African American children could not go, could not go to the same schools as white children. The schools that white children went to were nicer. They had better equipment. Uh, the schools that black children went to were maybe more crowded. They were poorer. They didn't have as good equipment. But the black children couldn't go to the white uh, to the school for white children because they were treated differently. They were kept apart. And in fact, black children and white children couldn't even play together. Even is like, like an extreme example. They couldn't go to school together. They couldn't even play together. Not even play together in the same place. Okay? That was obviously not right. It was unfair. On the bus, so not the bus, but on all buses, African Americans had to go all the way to the back, all the way to the back of the bus. Only whites could sit in the front of the bus, okay? So what this says is that on the bus in Georgia, in Atlanta, Georgia, when black people got on the bus, they couldn't sit next to the door. They had to walk, and in those case, those times, I know this, the city bus is in Seoul, right? You have a door in the front, you have a door in the middle, so it doesn't matter where you sit. But 1930s, they only had one door at the front of the bus. So you get on that door, you gotta sit in the back of the bus. That means when you get off, you gotta come all the way to the front and get off again the same door. It's himdoro. It's easier to sit in the front of the bus. Also, there's not so much gas of uh, ex exhaust from the bus in the front of the bus. The front of the bus was a better place to sit, but black people couldn't sit there. If there were 
too many white people on the bus. Of course, if the bus was empty, the black person could sit in the front of the bus, but if a white person got on, the black person had to get to the back of the bus. That's the situation. So only whites could sit in the front of the bus. That's what we're talking about here. Okay. African Americans and whites had to live apart. Martin Luther King Jr. was very upset because of this. He wanted everyone to be treated the same way. He worked hard to change the laws. Okay, so African Americans and whites had to live apart. It's what we talked about before. Black children, this school, white children, this school. They're apart, not together, apart. Black children play here, white children play there, apart. So basically, in, especially in Southern America in the 1930s, they, communities wanted to keep black people and white people apart. They didn't want the two people like living in the same place, uh, using the same buildings, using the same restrooms. They wanted to keep it apart. So apart, not together. Martin Luther King Jr. was very upset. He was unhappy because of this, this situation right had to live apart this refers to this well actually this had to live apart this refers to they had to live apart that idea remember use this to refer back to ideas don't use it use this this is better to use so he was upset because of this he wanted everyone to be treated the same way, you could also say he wanted everyone to be treated equally, equally, the same way. And especially in front of the law. He wanted the law to treat everybody the same way. And he wanted society to treat everybody the same way. Even if they were different. You know, there's, there's tall people, there's short people, there's skinny people, there's fat people, there's white people, black people, uh, people say yellow people, red people, right? There's all sorts of different colors. But he wanted everybody to be treated equally, the same way. He worked hard to change the laws, so he worked very hard in his life. He made it his job, almost his career, to change the laws. Many people joined him, both African Americans and whites. Thanks to his hard work, the laws changed. Children today can now all go to the same schools. People can also sit where they want to on the bus. Okay, so this kind of talks about uh, uh, what he did, Martin Luther King did, and how people helped him, and how his dream came true. So many people joined him. He did not work alone. Other people helped him. Not just African Americans, but also white people also helped him. Many people, both black and white, knew that this was unfair. It's not right to keep people apart. Everybody's equal. So unfortunately, some people, right, especially those people in power, didn't want to change. And they were fighting against those people. They tried to change the laws. Thanks to his hard work. Of course, his, we're talking about Martin Luther King, right? Martin Luther King. Thanks to his hard work, Martin Luther King, the laws changed. Unfortunately, Martin Luther King was killed before the laws were changed. He didn't see those, right? It's, so it was very hard work, and it was very dangerous what he was doing. Children today, today though, the situation is different. Today, modern times, right? Yojum, yojume. Uh, today can now all go to the same schools. Of course, in, in modern America, children are not separated based on the color of their skin or their your ethnic background. Absolutely not. All children go to the same school. People can also sit where they want to on the bus. It doesn't matter who you are or where you're from or who your uh, uh, family is from, where your family is from. You get on a bus, sit where you want to. That's normal today. That's the law today. You can sit wherever you want to sit. Just don't sit in the driver's seat, right? Because you shouldn't do that, okay? But anywhere else, you can sit down, okay? 
The third Monday of January is Martin Luther King Jr. Day. On this day, we remember all he has done for African Americans. Martin Luther King Jr. was a brave man who made the world a better place. Okay, so Martin Luther King Jr., as I said before, he was killed. He's dead. He's not with us anymore. And well, he could be. He, was, he grew up in the 1930s. He'd be very old if he was still with us. But he was killed when he was still not that old, and it's a very tragic thing. However, people want to remember Martin Luther King Jr. He was a very important person in American history. So, to remember him, the government set aside the third Monday of January. Now, many American holidays are like this. It's the third uh, Monday of January, or Thanksgiving is the third Thursday of November. That just means that his day that we remember him is always a Monday. One reason people do that is because you don't want to have a national holiday in the middle of the week because this is a day off. Schools are closed. Businesses are closed. You don't want to close business on a Wednesday or a Thursday, right? You go to, you go to school or you go to work for Monday, Tuesday. Wednesday's off. Go back Thursday, Friday. That's no good. Who wants a day, one day off in the middle of the week? So you have three days off if it's a Monday or Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Yeah, you have three days off together. You can take a trip. You can go somewhere. You can visit Martin Luther King's birthplace. You can go to Washington, D.C., where he gave his speech. You can, maybe you can do something to remember. Fortunately, people don't do that. They just like a long holiday, a long weekend. But anyway, the third Monday of January is Martin Luther King Jr. Day. That's the day that the government set aside. Let's remember. On this day, we remember all he has done for African Americans. By the way, it's not just African Americans that Martin Luther King helped. He helped everybody, right? Even white people. Uh, even though he was fighting against uh, for equality for African Americans, of course, he made society better. And that benefits everybody, no matter what color of their skin, right? So Martin Luther King Jr. is very important. He didn't just, sure, he did fight for African Americans, but he also was fighting for every race in America. He was fighting for everybody. Okay, Martin Luther King Jr. was a brave man. Like I said, he was killed. Uh, a crazy white person shot him and killed him because he didn't agree with Martin Luther King. So in that time, of course, it was very dangerous. You had some very strong people, and unfortunately, there still are some people who, who, ha who are racists, we call them racists, who don't agree that black people or white people are the same or any race is the same. They think that they are better than everybody. And these people are really terrible, terrible people, right? But at that time, there were many more of them and they threatened to kill him and one of them did. So he was a very brave man for standing up for his rights and for everybody's rights. So Martin Luther King Jr. was a brave man who made the world a better place. Like I said, he helped everybody. It is not just one group of people. He helped everybody. And in that way, he made the world a better place for all. Okay, let's talk about our reading comprehension questions. Number one, this story is about what? A, an angry man. B, a brave man. C, a scared man. D, a white man. So, which is the best answer? Which is the best way to describe Martin Luther King Jr. because this story is about Martin Luther King Jr. It's about his life, it's about the situation when he grew up, and it's about what he did. So, was Martin Luther King Jr. an angry man? Yeah, he was a little angry, he was not happy, but instead of, it's not really that he was angry so much as that he was upset, right? and he wanted to change things. So it wasn't really that he was an angry man. That's not the main point of the reading passage, right? B, was he a brave man? Yes, he was a brave man. Because like I said before, it was a dangerous thing to do to fight for racial equality at that time. So Martin Luther King was a brave man. This story is about a brave man. 
Martin Luther King Jr. was a brave man. B. Was he scared? No, that's the opposite of brave. D. Was he white? No, he wasn't white. He was black. That was, uh, you know, why he was upset. Uh, yeah, of course, it doesn't mean that white people couldn't be upset about the laws. They were. Many white people joined Martin Luther King, but he wasn't white. He was black. So this is not a story about a white man. It's a story about a black man. Okay. A black brave man who made the world a better place. Okay, number two. Okay, the story is about a brave man. Number two. In Georgia, and you know, to, to help you out, you probably don't know where Georgia is. Georgia is in the southern United States, and the southern states have more of a history of slavery and racial inequality in America. So, of course, that's not true today. You know, uh, ba basically, just about everywhere in America, people understand that uh, everybody should be equal. Like I said, you always have some stupid terrible people out there, but they're everywhere, unfortunately. But usually uh, it's all the same in the states. But in the past, especially in the southern states like Georgia, Alabama, Mississippi, those states, it was a very bad situation. In Georgia in the 1930s, beep, could sit in the front of the bus. Who could sit in the front of the bus? Do you remember the reading? Everybody? No, not everybody. Only African Americans? No, remember the front of the bus was the best place and black Americans, African Americans did not have the power back then. C, only children. Now the reading passage didn't say that only children could sit in the front of the bus. The reading passage said that only white people could sit in the front of the bus. So in Georgia, in the 1930s, only white people could sit in the front of the bus. That was the best place to sit. Okay, number three. African American children, beep, white children. So we're looking for a verb clause here. A, went to school with. African American children went to school with white children? No. The reading passage said that they were apart, right? They tried to keep the races apart. B, African American children were smarter than white children? The reading passage didn't say anything about one person or one group was smarter than the other group. Didn't say anything about that. So that's not correct. C. African American children couldn't play with white children. What did the reading passage say? It said that uh, black children, African American children had to play here one place, white children had to play in another place. They could not play in the same place. So that's correct. C is the right answer. And D, African American children hated white children. The passage didn't say anything about that. So that's not the right answer. The right answer is African American children couldn't play with white children. That's what the passage said. That's the correct answer. Number four, Martin Luther King Jr. dreamed. What did he dream about? Remember, what was his dream? His dream was that. Okay, what was it about? Martin Luther King Jr. dreamed about his mother? Well, maybe, but it didn't say that in the passage, right? So that's not the right answer. B, dreamed that someday everybody would be apart, away from each other. No, that's the opposite of what he wanted, right? He didn't dream that everybody would be apart one day. He wanted the opposite. He dreamed of visiting Atlanta. He dreamed of visiting Atlanta. If you say that, it sounds like he never went to Atlanta or he really wanted to go to Atlanta. But the reading passage says he grew up in Atlanta. So why would he dream of visiting Atlanta? He lived there. <laughs> so he wouldn't dream of visiting Atlanta because he lived there. So that leaves us with dreamed that someday everybody would be equal. And that's what the reading passage said. Martin Luther King Jr. dreamed that someday everybody would be equal. That was his dream. That was his famous speech. I have a dream, right? And that was the message of his dream, that someday everybody would be equal. Okay, let's review. Again, here is Martin Luther King, <clears throat> a great man, a very important man in American history. Uh, what can we say about him? One, we can say his dream was that someday all people would be equal. 
That's what we just talked about, okay? That was his dream. That was his goal for his life. <clears throat> Thanks to his hard work, the laws changed. The laws did change. Uh, uh, soon after he died, the Civil Rights Act was passed, and the laws changed. The discrimination, the keeping people apart was against the law everywhere in America. He was a brave man who made the world a better place. Absolutely. He was a brave man. It was dangerous to do what he was doing. It was dangerous to say what he was saying. Uh, even before he was shot, his family uh, was, had some uh, bad times when people would come by and throw things at their house. Sometimes people would throw bricks in their windows. People would burn things on their lawns. Many people didn't want uh, what he wanted and so they were uh, against him and some of these people of course were violent so he was a brave man to stand up for what he wanted he made the world a better place not just for African Americans but for all people of course African Americans were the ones who benefited the most but really everybody benefited from his work okay well that's a very important lesson very important hero I hope you learned a little bit, not just about words and vocabulary and sentence structure, but also a little bit about American history and about heroes, really. Who is somebody that you can respect, that you can look up to, somebody who makes the world a better place, whether they're an inventor, uh, an athlete with a big heart, or a person who changes the laws to make the world a better place. That's the important thing. Okay, we'll see you guys next time. Take care.